everyone. Welcome back to Yoga with Katie. I'm Katie and today we are going to be doing a floor stretching session. So this session is going to be very easy on the knees and very easy on the wrists. So if that kind of content interests you, make sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I make content here on YouTube and I also have my own Etsy shop with my sister. So if you want to check that out, the link will be down in the description. Let's get started. So coming into your simple seated, whatever that looks like for you, um, I always prefer knees bent. If that is too much on your knees, you can always grab a pillow or Grab your block. You can put those underneath your knees to help cushion that in your hips. Or if you want, you can sit with your legs out in front of you, put a pillow up underneath them, and that'll keep a little bend in them. So whatever feels best for you. When you find your simple seated, you're sitting up tall, your shoulders are back, your belly button's drawn in, your tailbone is softened down towards the floor. We're not trying to stick our booties out behind us. Take a few deep inhales through your nose, exhales through your mouth. Keep those shoulders relaxed down. On your next inhale, sweep up. Exhale, right arm comes down next to the right hip. Left arm comes up and over. That left hip might want to start popping up off the floor, but don't let it. Make sure it's rooted down onto the floor. Keeping the left shoulder down and back on your body. Feeling that stretch on your left side. On your inhale, bring it back up, lift with your core. Exhale, left hand comes down to your left side, right arm comes up and over for a stretch down your right side. Keep that right hip down on your mat. On your inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, take both hands back behind you. Lace your fingers together, draw your shoulders down and back, and look up towards the ceiling for your chest opener. If you are unable to lace your fingers behind you, you can always place your hands back behind you on the floor and bring your chest forward. That works too. Find your breath. Gently release those arms. On your next inhale, sweep up. Exhale, right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. Left hand back behind you. Keep your back nice and tall and gently twist in towards the left. Bring it back. Sweep up, deep inhale. Exhale, left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. Right hand comes back behind you. Spinal twist towards the right. Bring it back. Deep inhale, sweep up. 
Exhale, forward fold, hinging forward from the hips. Keep those shoulders down and back. I don't care how far forward you can go. I want you to keep the alignment in your spine so we're not hunching over our legs. Keeping the back nice and tall and gently leaning forward from the hips. Make sure both hips stay down on the ground. They might want to pop up in this position. And just breathe through it. Gently walk it back up. If your legs are stretched out long, you don't have to worry about this, but if your legs are bent in, you're going to switch your legs out. So right now my right leg is furthest from me, so I'm going to move it closer to me, moving my left leg out in front. So I'm just switching my legs around. Sit up tall. Deep inhale, sweep up. Exhale, forward fold. Keep those buns down on your mat. And anytime you want to bring movement to a stretch, feel free to do so. A lot of stretches I like to rock back and forth to. I might not always cue you to do that, but that's always an option in your practice if that's what feels good to you and your body that day. Walk it back up. All right, we are going to bend in our right knee and extend out our left leg. Careful not to lock out that left knee. That's going to cause knee pain. If you need to, grab your pillow or your block and put it up underneath that leg just to remind you, okay? Flex those left toes back towards your face. Try to separate the toes. Point the left toes forward for a stretch on the top of your foot. Make sure you're breathing through it. Flex those toes back up towards your face. On your next inhale, sweep up. We're going to turn our chest towards the left side. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Your goal is not to reach the foot. Your goal is to honor your body and honor your alignment. And make sure your back is nice and flat and hinge forward from the hips. I don't care if you can touch your foot or not. Gently walk it up. Bring your chest back to center. Deep inhale, sweep up. Exhale, left hand comes down to the left shin. Right arm comes up and over, keeping that right hip planted down on the mat. Getting a stretch on our right sides. Make sure you're breathing through it. Use your core. Bring it back up. We're going to switch our legs out. So bending the left foot in, extending the right leg out long. Make sure you have a little bend in that right knee. Don't lock them out. Sitting up tall, we're going to flex the right foot back towards our face. Point the right toes. Flex the right foot back. A little bend in that right knee. 
Deep inhale, sweep up. Turn your chest towards your right leg. Exhale, forward fold. Honor your alignment, honor your body. Don't stretch to the point where you're in pain. And find your breath in the pose. Use your hands, walk it back up. Bring your chest back to center. Deep inhale, sweep up. Exhale, right hand comes down to the right shin. Left hand comes up and over to give us a stretch on the left side. Keep that left hip planted down. He's gonna wanna pop up. your next inhale bring it back up both hands up exhale hands to heart space all right from here we're going to move into staff so you can stay where you are I'm gonna turn so you can see me from the side so in staff our legs are out in front of us our knees are not locked back we're gonna point our big toes inward so what that does by pointing our big toes inward, that makes our inner thighs turn on. Okay, so if you go from a natural feet splayed out, bring them in, you should feel the inner thighs start to turn on. So from there, turn your quads on. Okay, they should be flexed. You're pushing your calves into your mat, even if you have something under your knees to make sure that you are not locking your knees out. Push in with your heels then, okay? So you're actively pushing into the mat. We're gonna place our hands back behind us. So fingertips pointed towards your rear, if that's available to you. Don't feel like this is something you have to do. If you need to for your wrists, to put your hands outward, that's totally fine. You do what honors your body. From here, you're going to find the four corners in those palms. We're going to draw our shoulders down and back. I always end up with a little bit of a bend in my elbow. Belly button's drawn in, shoulders down and back. There's a lot of things working here. You should feel your calves pushing into the mat. You should feel your thighs turn on. You should feel your belly button drawn in. You should feel tension throughout your arms because you're actively pushing yourself, your hands, into your mat. Find your breath. This is one of those deceptive ones. It looks very, very simple, but when you start doing it and you realize how many muscles are actually working, you start to work up a sweat a little bit. Gently release those hands, release those legs. Take some wrist rolls if you need it. We are going to go into a figure four position or pigeon position. Um, different people know it by different names. So there's a few different ways that we can take this, okay? So we're gonna leave our right leg straight and we're gonna take our left leg and bend it. From here, these are the different modifications that you can take depending on what your knees are telling you, okay? So the first modification is ankle, or left ankle on the right shin. Letting the knee fall out, you should start to feel that in your left hip. From there, if you want a little bit more, you can take that ankle above the knee, do not sit it on the knee, onto the right thigh. That's going to give you a little bit more into that hip. If you want more than that, put your hands back behind you just like we were in staff. 
Draw your shoulders down and back. And start working that right heel's way towards your right glutes. And that's going to give you an even deeper stretch. So you choose what works best for you. Honor your body and honor your alignment. And find your breath. I'm going to turn towards you because this is going to prep us for our next exercise and our next stretch. So, from here, if you are in this position, you're going to bring your right foot towards the left and then drop your legs towards the right. Taking that right foot, we're going to tuck him in next to the left glute. Now you honor your body again. My uh, left or right, my right foot can fit nicely next to my left glutes. If your foot looks like this, that's totally fine, okay? You honor what you can do. So, right foot is tucked in. Our left foot is on the outside of the right knee and is planted down into the ground. This might not be available for you and your knees. If it's not, don't be afraid to take that left leg over here, okay? So whether your left foot is on the inside or the outside, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a twist towards our left, okay? So two different ways you can do that. If your left foot is on the inside, you're going to take your right hand, grab the outside of the left shin, Take your left hand, plant it back behind you like we do in spinal twists, and turn towards the left side of the room. If your left foot is on the outside of the knee, you're going to actively use your inner thigh muscles to squeeze that knee into your chest. You don't just want it to go limp. Squeeze the knee into your chest, use your leg muscles, right elbow, on the outside of the left knee, left hand back behind you, just like in a spinal twist, and gently twist towards the left. You pick whichever works best for you, and breathe through it. Gently relax that twist. We are going to untwist our left leg if it's not already. And from here, we're going to bring the right shin parallel with our chest. Okay? So, you honor what you can do. Grab your pillows, grab your blocks if you need them. I need a block in this position. So, we are going to go into what's called either double pigeon or some people call it fire log. I call it fire log just because that's what always sticks into my mind. So what we're going to do, this right here, this um, right leg bent, that might be enough for you. You might take your block and put it up underneath the knee because that's enough for your right hip. Okay, you honor what you do. Another way that you can do this if you want to get both hips involved and a little bit deeper of a stretch, if that's okay for your body, you're going to take your left leg, your left ankle, and place it on top of the right knee. So in the full expression of this movement, both knees would relax down and find grounding. So my right knee would touch the ground, my left knee would touch my right foot. I don't have that. So what I do in my fire log is take my block and put it up underneath my left leg when my left leg is on the top. 
That gives me better alignment. That helps me root down into this exercise through my hips and through my right leg. That gives me more grounding. So that honors my body. You honor your body. Draw your shoulders down and back. And if it feels good to you, you can take a tiny hip hinge and lean forward to open up those hips even a little bit more if that's available to you. If you're leaning forward, bring it back up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale through your mouth. Go ahead and remove your assistance one at a time. Release your left leg first, then your right leg. And we're going to go back into that staff pose. So I'm going to turn so you can see me both legs out in front, little bend in those knees, don't lock them out. Big toes are pointed inward, so inner thighs can turn on. We're grounding down either through the calves or through the heels. Hands are back behind our glutes. We're rooting down through the four corners of both palms. Shoulders are down and back, jaw is relaxed. Belly button is drawn in. You should feel almost your whole body start to tense up just a little bit. Find your breath. Gently release your hands, release your legs. And we're gonna take this from the other side. So left leg stays straight this time, right leg bends. This side might look different than your other side, so honor what this side does and what feels good on this side. So to go over modification again, take your right ankle, you can start at your left shin if that feels good for you. You can bring it up onto your left thigh, or if it's available to you, you can place your hands back behind you, draw your shoulders down and back, and slowly start to work that left leg in towards the left glute. Now this side is much tighter on me than my left side is. Find your breath, relax your jaw, Again, I'm going to turn towards you. You can stay where you are. And we're going to make our way into our twist. So if you are up, you're going to take your left foot, move it in. Drop your knee and your right foot off to the left. Start tucking in that left foot towards the right glutes. And again, you can take the right foot on the outside or the inside, or you can move it to the outside of that left knee. You choose what works best for you. If you're on the inside, you're gonna take your left hand, grab the outside of the right shin, right hand roots down behind you, and you take a gentle twist to the right. If it's available, you can move that right foot to the outside of the left knee left elbow on the inside of the right knee, right hand roots down behind you, taking a gentle twist to the right. Breathe with it.
Gently release that twist. Release that right leg. From here, going into our double pigeon or our fire log, you're gonna bring the left shin parallel with your chest. This might be enough for you. If you want a little bit more, or a lot more, <laughs> take your right ankle, place it on the left knee, keeping your torso up nice and tall. Use your blocks, use your pillows as needed. Keep your back nice and tall. And if it feels good, you can take a little baby hip hinge to open up that right hip even a little bit more. Find your breath. Gently start releasing your props. You can release that right leg first. And then the left leg. Moving back into staff one more time. Big toes are inward, thighs are turned on, calves and heels are pushing down into the floor. Hands are back behind you, rooting down through your palms. Shoulders are down and back, belly buttons drawn in. You are actively pushing yourself into the floor through your hands and through your calves. Almost like you're trying to pick your rear up off the floor. Gently release it. We are going to end out on our backs today, so nice and slow you can make your way there. When you get here, extend your legs out long, take your arms up overhead and stretch it all out. Bring your knees into your chest, give them a hug. If it feels good, rock it side to side. If this is too much on your knees, always remember you can take your palms and grab the backs of your thighs and gently pull those knees into your chest. That's an option as well. From here, keep the right knee in. We're going to extend the left leg out. If you can, keep the left leg hovered above the ground. Don't just let it flop down to the floor. Take the right knee and pull it up towards your right armpit. Both shoulders should be down on the ground. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. Slowly bring that left leg back in. Give both knees a hug. Keep the left leg in this time. Extend the right leg out. And gently pull that knee towards your left armpit. Your left knee towards your left armpit. Both shoulders stay down on the ground. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. They don't need to be working right now.
slowly start to bring that right knee back in. Give both legs a hug. If it feels good, wrap side to side. Place both feet down on the ground, knees bent, arms out like a T. Drop both knees off to your right. It's okay if they don't stay together. Both shoulders stay on the ground. Look out over your left arm. Gently bring the knees back up. Take your arms up overhead, stretch out. On your exhale, take your arms back out to a T. Drop both knees off to the left and look out over your right arm. Bring your knees back up towards the ceiling, feet on the floor, arms up overhead, stretch out. On your exhale, begin to straighten out those legs. If it feels good to you, you can take your pillow and put it up underneath your knees if you feel this in your low back, or if you just want to help those hips relax a little bit more. Elevating the knees, that's what you need. Let the backs of your hands come down to your mat, palms facing up towards the ceiling. Draw those shoulders down and back. A little space between your chin and your chest. And tune back in with your breath. Letting your belly rise and fall. On your inhales, you feel your belly expand, your side body, your ribs, your back body expanding out. Taking in as much air as you can. And your exhales start slowly Drawing that belly button back in and completely emptying yourself. Coming into our Shavasana, our final rest, our place of nothing, our place of meditation, our place of prayer, our place of rest. Starting with our heads, working our way down to our feet. Relax your forehead. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. Your arms. Your hands. Relax your hips. Your legs. and your feet. Rest back into that mat.
Gently begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes and bring some awareness back to your body. And if it feels good, you can roll over onto whatever side feels best. Slowly, no fast movements. You can begin to make your way back to your seated position, whatever that looks like for you. When you get here, you're sitting up tall. Your hands are relaxed down on your knees. Deep inhales through the nose, exhales through the mouth. On your next inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart space. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart space. Last one, sweep up. Exhale, push through those palms, hands to heart space. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are all finished. If you like that, please remember to subscribe to my channel and to give this video a thumbs up. And remember to be kind, show love, and give grace. Bye-bye.